Hello and welcome. My name is Pollyanna Rhodes and I work for iShares UK Intermediaries team. I'm going to be talking to you about exchange traded funds today. Looking at the agenda, I'm going to be looking at iShares and the growth of the ETF industry and then looking at ETFs, what are the benefits, looking at total cost of ownership and securities lending and then finally implementing ETFs and how advisors are using ETFs in this industry. So starting off looking at BlackRock and iShares, who exactly are we? BlackRock is the asset manager who manages the iShares funds. We have three and a half trillion dollars of assets under management and out of that 578 billion belong to the assets under management of iShares. BlackRock is one of the largest asset managers globally and iShares is the leading ETF provider. At BlackRock we have over a thousand investment products both on the active and also the passive side. iShares we have over 470 ETFs globally. The good news for you is 105 of those are going to be suitable. So you need to be looking at the 105 products that we have in our Dublin domiciled range of funds. These are going to be suitable for you because they're registered for sale in the UK and also from a taxation point of view they hold UK reporting fund status and we'll talk about that later on. So looking at the global market growth of ETFs and you can see here with the chart since 2000 up until now absolutely staggering growth. The European annual growth rate is now at 96% over those 10 years and it's set to continue. Moving on to your market, so looking at the uptake of ETFs amongst financial advisors, this is looking at ETF growth rates on the open architecture RAP platforms and you can see just last year 106% growth rate just from iShares flow on those platforms. A key catalyst for growth is of course the RDR and we do believe this is set to continue. So what exactly are ETFs? Let, let's look at this in more detail. ETFs really put them into two different categories. Start off looking at them as a typical pooled fund, a mutual fund structure that you all know very well and then with the added benefits of a stock or share. That means that they're traded on a stock exchange. They're a type of index tracking fund and managed to mirror the performance of a particular benchmark index like the FTSE 100, MSCI World, MSCI Emerging Markets and the aim is to give you the same return as that particular underlying market. One of the most important things to note is all individuals authorised by the FSA to advise on investments are authorised to advise on ETFs. This is important because some advisors have seen the stock or share element of ETFs as meaning that you're not allowed to advise on ETFs and this states that you absolutely can. So let's look at some basic definitions here. First of all we're looking at exchange traded funds and they're put into two different categories, two different types of structures. First of all the cash physical or direct replication and that's what I'm going to be talking about and the second is swap synthetic or indirect and that's what my colleagues will be talking about later. On the other side is what we call exchange traded products. These are exchange traded notes or exchange traded commodities and they are a slightly different structure so there are certain questions that you need to be asking the ETF provider to make sure that you know and understand what your risks are. So let's focus on the physical based ETFs. Out of our 105 ETFs in our Dublin range 103 of those are physical based. Now what that means is the ETF is open-ended. We create and redeem the actual ETF units on client demand. So our portfolio managers will actually go into the market and buy those stocks that make up the particular benchmark index. In this case we have the example of the FTSE 100 and you can see all of the stocks that represent those or some of the examples HSBC, BP, Rio Tinto and so on. So our portfolio managers actually buy those stocks 
weight them according to the index, and then wrap them into the exchange-traded fund. Therefore, you as investors are physically owning those securities. You're not buying into BlackRock, you're not buying into iShares, and your assets are segregated. They're held with our custodian, who is State Street, based in Ireland. Now let's look at some of the benefits to ETFs. We're going to go through all of these in more detail. So we're looking at transparency, liquidity, diversification, flexibility, and then cost effectiveness. Starting off with probably one of the most key is transparency, knowing exactly what you own. The example that we have here is a screenshot for, taken from our website showing the top 10 holdings of the FTSE 100. You can see the price and all of the weightings. If you were to go on our website, click a little button saying view all holdings, you'd see all of those holdings that represent that particular fund. And indeed, if you were to look at any of the other funds, you'd see exactly the same. So that means that you and your clients can see exactly what you're owning. If you're looking for particular stocks to see what you're exposed to, again, you can see that very simply. Then looking at diversification and also flexibility. Looking at this on two levels, you have firstly the fund level. So you're buying into an entire market. So you're exposed to that market and it means you have huge flexibility and diversification in that market. Then looking at the portfolio level, so if you're buying into a market and then you're diversifying by different asset classes, you have those two levels of diversification. You could look at fixed income, equity income, into international equity, pan-European, single countries and so on. Secondly to that, you have the diversification but you also have the flexibility. You as advisors have very different business models from one advisor to another. When you're looking at the flexibility of an ETF, it means that you could maybe choose to put ETFs into the core of your portfolio, so you're having a low cost, very well diversified core, and then with your satellite, might pick into active managers to give that additional alpha. Or conversely, you might see active managers as the core of your business, so build out that core, and then with your satellite, buy into ETFs where you maybe don't find active managers who are going to give you exposures to those particular markets. Now let's look at total cost of ownership. Some investors do come a bit unstuck when they're looking at cost, simply looking at the total expense ratio. It's really important to consider all of the additional costs. So we live in a world where total expense ratio is not total, and nor is it a ratio, unfortunately. So you start off with that point, looking at the TER. That covers the management and licensing, custody, auditing fees. In this particular example, you have 35 basis points. Then you look at your external trading costs. These are the costs to actually buy into the fund. With iShares, you can't buy directly from BlackRock. You'd have to buy through an intermediary broker either through a platform or directly with a stockbroker. And that means that all of those brokers across the UK and indeed Europe are competing on price. That's what we call the multi-dealer model, and therefore your bid offer spread should be very tight. We've put 10 basis points for the external trading costs here. And then we have securities lending, which I will talk about on the next slide. Securities lending within the fund can generate additional revenue to go back into the fund. And in this case, you can see 40 basis points of lending revenue generated from the iShares Eurostox 50. And then the end point is your total cost of ownership. You have 0.05%, five basis points, where you might look to start off with at 35 basis points. Your true cost of ownership for that particular fund over a year is five basis points.